Hello everyone, and welcome back to this week's Dev Diary. Today, in another brief Dev Diary, we're taking another look at trains and talking about some of the minor tweaks and appearances that come with them. So the opening paragraph of the Dev Diary talks about how trains are still going to be the core of your logistics network, with trucks, uh, and I guess motorised, just being a secondary and minor way of delivering supply from your railways directly to the tiles that need them. The Dev Diary goes on to explain that creating trains is something that is unlocked via the technology tree. However, many countries will already start with trains unlocked, so I'm going to assume that all of the majors will have it, but countries such as Liberia and Tibet may be lacking in the uh, railway department. Here we can see a picture talking about how your logistics are fulfilled. I think we've seen something similar prior, so it shouldn't be anything too new. But it does show here that uh, you can see the trains that are needed and how many you have in your stockpile. So assuming you've got enough trains built up in your stockpile with military factories, you should have enough to supply your logistics. As we can see here, it also tells us how many convoys are required for supply. So I'm assuming this is to do with areas that are perhaps encircled in some manner and the only way you can arrive to them is supply through the sea or perhaps units that are on islands or far away distant continents. Definitely something for your Mulberry Harbour gameplay convoys. So the overall way that trains are calculated to be needed for your logistic networks is a combination of the amount of supply that is being used by each of the nodes and then the distance that the node has to travel the supply straight towards your individual troops. This means that the more troops you have using up supply in one single node, the more trains or motorised you're going to require in order to deliver the supply to them from that node. And in turn, we do of course state that if you don't have enough trains that are required, you will get penalties, probably in the form of attrition and organisation based things. Although I will say, that I think it could be a cool idea, maybe somewhere down the line or maybe they've thought of something similar already, is to add in some kind of medical carriage or hospital train, in a sense, because a large part of World War II did involve um, ferrying troops back towards hospitals behind the line and then sending them back to the front line once they were ready. So perhaps having researched something in the form of medical trains or something of this kind could allow you to get some trickle back, making sure that keeping your supply lines up isn't just about attrition, but also about keeping men alive. But that's just a small idea I had, I don't know if anything will come of it. Moving on, in a previous dev diary, there was the discussion that different supply nodes could have a train priority setting, meaning that trains would prioritise fueling supply into one area as opposed to another, but they say that it didn't work well with the underlying simulation and they've removed it. Which, I'm unsure how this is going to work because we haven't seen any of it in practice yet, but making sure that supply was directed towards your most important front line, let's say it's Germany in the west as opposed to Siberia in the east, is kind of important. So I hope there is some logic that applies here, because if all your trains are being wasted away in Siberia, I could imagine that's quite annoying. But maybe it's a non-problem, and maybe it was worth getting rid of. Without seeing anything, we just don't know. So, with the arrival of freight trains comes a new, as they say, juicy target for the enemy, and with that comes a new air mission for your CAS, or close air support, and bombers to be able to do to stop the trains and the supply from being delivered. Logistic Strike has the good ability of destroying trains and trucks, as well as destroying the railways in target areas. This differs from strategic bombing, which goes for infrastructure, but uh, can go for a wide variety of things, Logistics Strike is very direct, going for their supply and cutting them off. It also says this is good if you don't want to start attacking their industry because you're planning to invade and occupy them, therefore you're going to want to take that industry for yourself without having to repair it for six months before you can use it. So, moving on to train variants. Trains are a researchable technology, but as we said earlier, most nations start off with the standard primary version, there are just alternate things to research along the way. Unlike normal units, like boats or soldiers or anything like that, these are not controllable and they are simply simulated along your rail lines that you've already built, going and delivering supply directly to where it's required. 
So at the start, the key point is building civilian trains, which are your standard supply delivering trains. As you progress further, there will be a technology to make civilian trains cheaper to construct, which means that you can uh, exchange your military factories into building more weapons in a much more supported war effort. On the flip side, to counter the logistics strike, which will be uh, targeting your supply lines and your trains, you can also research armoured trains, which, while more expensive to produce, should be more resistant to the close air support and bombers, and therefore won't disrupt your logistics as much. And then, keeping in touch with how planes and tanks and all the rest of it have their own custom uh, models for different nations, we can see that the Soviets have their own custom trains, as do the Americans with their Pennsylvania class uh, train, in case it wasn't clear enough. Then we have the French with their much more obscure titling of trains, and the Germans. The jury is still out whether the British will have the Flying Scotsman, but one can only hope. In addition, we also get to see some of the trains as they appear on the screen, so here we can see a small train moving south of Castle, across a bridge, and we can also see an armoured train moving across this mountain tile. With that ends the discussion about trains, and moving on to hub and province supply distribution. Unfortunately not as engaging as a Soviet Union focus tree, but pretty important stuff to know if you're planning to win your wars. So, as we all know, the capital is typically the central location where all supply flows from. In that, you build railways that go to different supply hubs around the map, and then from the supply hubs, supply is delivered directly to different units on the field. So here we can see in this image how a supply hub will directly help supply units in each individual province. Starting from the tile that has the supply hub, each province that is one more further away from the supply hub will have less and less supply, which is further increased by uh, weather, terrain, rivers, and the general infrastructure. The size of the area that the supply hub can actually deliver supply to doesn't change. However, different supply hubs can overlap with one another. So as you can see in the red area, there is a city that doesn't have much supply, but getting a supply hub on that side that does reach that area will overlap with this supply area, and hopefully combined, you should be able to get supply to that location. In addition, motorised will help reduce the amount of low supply in those areas, so even though, let's say, you're fighting in a red area, if you can push up your supply of motorised, then hopefully you can get supply over to those divisions in the red area, and it won't be as bad. When multiple hubs are touching a province, a ratio is then applied to determine what percentage of supply is used from each hub, so it's not just that one hub is going to help one unit individually, but it's the overlapping of hubs that is going to combine both to supply your units. The final point I'll talk about is that in previous dev diaries, there was a discussion about how the weather on individual provinces is going to detract from the amount of supply that is delivered. But they found that the penalty that weather was having to uh, individual provinces of delivering supply was a little bit too difficult to predict and created situations they didn't like. So whether in between supply provinces I don't think is going to play a factor so much as the weather on the individual tile that a unit is standing on. Well, that was quite a wordy dev diary, wasn't it? But hopefully we got some more understanding about trains and logistics from it. But before we continue, with that we have the end of the dev diary, but there is always the comment section. And there are a couple of things I just thought we could look at before we wrap up this week's dev diary. So with these two questions, we can see that it's asked if there is more to the train tech branch, as well as being more things to discover with the armoured train. And currently, there is only one thing below the armoured train, which if I'm going to guess is the train which has the gun on top for attacking people, but there is no train designer, so you won't be able to customise the type of guns that could possibly go on such a train. There is also the question being asked if there's any other major features to come, to which there is alluded perhaps there is a little bit more. This would tie into the fact that we seem to have been going through a lot of major features, and yet we're very unsure about dates and we're very unsure about streams. Um, as I remember, typically the closer you got towards the release of the DLC, streams would start appearing, sort of showing off different focus tree paths that you could go down. But there's been none of that this year, and none of it's come yet necessarily, so I guess we wait and see. 
Blackpowder320 asked if they could see a map of the previewed uh, railway networks that are already going to exist. And I think we do get to see something like that, which is in a uh, post-invasion of France, Germany, which has got quite the railway network set up across all of its land. We also see one for the Soviets and how the supply can go straight out of Moscow and towards the front lines, as well as there being a central line that heads east out into the wastes of Siberia. Okay, and with that, I think that wraps up this week's dev diary. So yeah, a very technical dev diary again, but necessary to understand. I remain that this is 100% something I'd like to actually watch them do themselves on like a stream to demonstrate how you can interact with it, because I'm still unsure as to how much this is going to be very much so a micromanaging process of having to like build up different lines and make sure supply hubs are built up enough, or whether this is going to be something that for the most part has been built for all the major nations, and it's maybe something that only minor nations would have to worry about in terms of a global world conquest. Alas, only time will tell and we will have to wait. But with that, I shall say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, I hope this was helpful or somewhat informative. If you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. And if I don't see you next time, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.